You are listening to a podcast of the Geek.io Media Network. For all of our shows and more, visit geek-io.net. And to help support the network, head over to patreon.com slash geek.io. Hello, gentle listener. While Geek.io holds its talent to the highest standards, what follows will likely involve the sort of language usually reserved for sailors on leave. If you're of a delicate disposition, then perhaps you would consider a different podcast. found the most generic live show this is the generic live show hello everyone and welcome back to the generic live show this is the generic live show for a sunday it's good to be here um it's good to be back um every new episode of the generic live show these days is exciting it's a new adventure and I don't know where it'll take us. Um, we've got a good show planned. We've got a little bit of a lighter show planned than what we normally would. Um, which is good. Um, we've got a story time, which I haven't really done a proper story time in a while. I know there's been bits and pieces, but... There's been a few things that has happened to me over the last couple of weeks that I want to sort of share with y'all. And now that we're in this pre-recorded phase, um, we can kind of sit down and have a chat. Hi, welcome to my coffee shop, the Generic Life Coffee Shop, (laughs) where it's hashtag story time. Um, yeah, I think we've got that. We've got, uh, same as you remember, same as it ever was coming up in the middle and we got a a story at the end. So it's, well, a new story. (laughs) We've got a story and a new story. (laughs) Um, but first, um, an old bit, uh, of, from the live shows that we used to do was Kurosum Suri, where I would say something to Suri and my, my Suri would respond in interesting ways. Um, long time listeners of the show would remember Kurosum Suri from such hit phrases as what, what would you like to vert into pounds? That's, (laughs) that's Kurosum Suri for you. Um, I think I asked, like, what's six grams in ounces or something? And that's like, what would you like to convert into pounds? Just over and over again. But I had this debate with my friends. We were in line waiting to watch Avengers Endgame, which, no spoilers here. Um, uh, You'll have to listen to the Giga show. I think we're doing a rent and review on it soon. Um, but you have to like, well, we're waiting in line and I, we were having this debate of whether are shrimp actually pink in the wild? <laughs> Cause I, I, okay. Prawns, which I'm used to back home. Um, they are like, orangey in nature by colour um, but I think like here we were somewhere I think we were at City Walk and we saw the big pink shrimp and we're like I was like well shrimp aren't pink well at least prawns aren't but they were like yeah Dale shrimp are pink and then okay I was like hey Siri are shrimp pink? Oh, I said, hey Siri. And my phone's like, you are not available. <laughs> you must be connected to the internet. Um, but it was like, 
I said, R strip pinky. And it came back with uh, the following. I need to I need to pull this up because it's glorious. Um if I need I'll pull up the photo. It is worth the payoff, believe me. It comes up with it comes up with come on where are you? Here we go. I got it. Ask for pink is the original question. I don't know if this visual is coming up. Siri thought I said, ah, shrimp dick. <laughs> the classic line that I say all the time is, ah, shrimp dick. And it's like, here's what I found. And then it comes up with input interpretation, ah, and crag on, whatever that is. And then have penises or not. And then it says, data not available. <laughs> you know, sometimes I worry about my mental health. But that's <laughs> just glossing over that. Um, but I thought, again, shrimp are dick. That's not a shrimp pink. You know, it's Siri talk. That's your course on Siri. Ow, 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 ow. Um... But let's get into story time with Dale. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a Run Disney event. And, you know, Run Disney is a, it's a part of the Disney company who puts on like running race events. Like they put on like a half marathon event. Princess Marathon event, Star Wars, Food and Dash, or whatever it's called. R- r- wine and Dine. No. Run and Dash. No. The, <laughs> the classic Run and Dash event. That's a pretty good name for something. The Run and Dash event. Spectacular. <laughs> the Run and Dash Spectacular. But... They put on these events where people can run these actual, like, properly recorded races that they can use for further marathons, but it's Disney-themed. So, they have that, and I did the Star Wars 5K a couple of weeks ago, and, oh man. (laughs) So, this is not my first run Disney event. I did one in January of 2016 and it was, that was so much fun. And I did the half marathon with, um, Rachel and CJ from Geek.io and I loved it. It was, yes, half marathon is a lot. It's 13.1 miles, I believe. But it, that was a lot. So I was like, a, and a group of us from work decided that we wanted to do something like this together. 5Ks, uninvasive there. You can walk the whole thing. And as long as you kept a 16 minute mile, which I, <laughs> looking back at it on retrospect, we're like, did we? But that's the basic principle um but who <laughs> it was an event so we get these are always yeah and they're also running through disney property before they open for the day so they're held at like four or five in the morning i think start time for this in retrospect was like five thirty, but you had to be in a parking lot by 5.30 in the morning with thousands of, of other people. But, which, in, again, in retrospect, sounds <laughs> sounds kind of great. But um, this kind of, this event was interesting. So me and three other friends, we ran out a 
hotel room beforehand because we're like we're not driving that far um to get to the event a day off because we're like hmm. <laughs> it's already early in the enough and that was fine it was the getting out of the bed thing that was hard but we got there it was it was it wasn't the best weather but it got worse as time kind of went on and it got worse and worse to the point where we got in the corrals ready to take off at 5.15 or so. Between 5.15 and 5.30, we were lined up, ready to go. All the music and stuff stops. Due to inclement weather, the Star Wars 5K, Rival Run 5K has been postponed. Yes, it got postponed because of lightning and thunder on the track. As soon as they said it, it started storming hard. Which, they either said one of two things. Well, in the beginning they said three. You can either go back to your cars and they'll send out a notification to everyone when we're lining back up. You can go into Epcot. <laughs> go to Epcot. <laughs> or go into these big coach buses and we'll hold everyone there. So we went to Epcot <laughs> at five in the morning. <laughs> Not clickbait. Um, yeah, and we all got shipped in and then on our way there, it just started pouring rain. It just started lightning, thunder, and just whoosh. It just... Florida let us have it for a solid hour and a half. Like, it was just going for it. And then... So, we were stuck in this, like, quick service restaurant called the Electric Umbrella, which, ironic, much, um for an hour and a, and a half and we were just sitting there going so <laughs> I spy with my little eye something beginning with <laughs> um but yeah we were literally just sitting there going what now so around 6.50 Yep. Figure that time out. I said 5.15 to 6.50. They were like, race is on, baby. But hey, the park opens in like two hours. So <laughs> dash. Just go for it. Go for the start line. But don't run too much because you'll fall over. <laughs> it's like you'll fall over and you will... Not, you you might trip. Like, they're like, yeah, don't, you can hurry, but don't run, you know. And then it was, at that point, they were like, no, no corrals. We're just, just go, 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 go. Um, and it was just one of those things where it's just like, I'm glad I had, like, other people there to not laugh about the situation with, but kind of empathize with, if that makes sense. You know, just kind of, we're all in this together, yeah. We kind of, <laughs> we kind of, it was turned into a bit of a joke at the end, you know. It was like, oops, well, we're doing this, yay, we're all here together. We're doing the massive wet run dash spectacular. <laughs> Featuring the World Showcase. We were... We were... Slipping and, and sliding around the world. <laughs> That's a good show title. It's just... Slipping and sliding around the world. And... Cute Daft Park. <laughs> but... 
Daft Punk, rather. No, there's no T in there. There's no T in Daft Punk. But we were like, yes, we're doing this together. However. <laughs> yes, and we were um, we were there, and then we got to the start line, and then within, hmm, I would say about 700 feet, 800 feet of the start line, lightning crash. Bow! Like, <laughs> lightning crash. Bow! Like, it's, that, that, that happened. And we're like, wow! And then we just started running. And then the people on stage are like, wow, well, let's not get that ass down. And I will give it to the entertainment people for keeping such high spirits in all of this. Like, this is the logistical nightmare. But it was like... It was, it was like... The, they, their energy levels were something to behold. They were like, yeah, we're all here. Who's first time? Woo! They were like, they're like, yeah, let's get excited. You've got stories now. You've got stories now. I need to, I need to start writing down some of these show titles. Um, because they're so good. You've got a story now and what was it sliding uh slipping slipping and sliding around the world okay around the world okay um but yes so they their energy levels were so good and hats off to them because they're like we're out here too <laughs> like i know we're not running the race but they were there since like set up of the whole event and they're like mm. they they could have been like eh, we're not meant to care but you know we're doing this for you you know um but you know i, I hats off to them and everyone did such an amazing job shout out to everyone who did the Star Wars Marathon event. Um, Y'all deserve it. And the medals and stuff. And... Anyway. um, Hats off to them. They deserve it. And the medals we got were so good. I don't have... um, I don't have my things on me. But I have my bib. And I have my medal. Well... I have pictures on my Instagram and stuff at the Dale Campbell. I think I put photos up there on my Instagram. <clears throat> if not, I need to. I need to fix that, like, right away. But it was just such one of those emotional roller cases where, like, we were excited to be there. And then we're like, it's postponed. And we're like, oh, And then we're in Epcot going, eh. And then we're like... Yeah, we're excited again. Oh, lightning crash. And then we're like, eh, we're running race. Um, the one thing I didn't like about the whole thing is that uh, some places around the, the World Showcase on the track are very narrow. So, <laughs> cramming all those people through like they were, it was like, oh, we just started making like farm animal noises. <laughs> like, and... I can't do a monkey. <laughs> it's my monkey impression. It's like... <laughs> okay, that's going to be a clip. I just know it. <laughs> oh, man. But... Star Wars 5K. So much fun. I, I recommend Run Disney events to anyone. And, you know... They are a bunch of fun, in hindsight, you know? So, alright, well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Wow, oof, we're 20 minutes in. <laughs> I didn't mean to be that, have that be so drawn out like it was, but hey, we love a good Dale story time, you know? 
it never happens. Except the next episode I'm recording, I'm doing another story time. So <laughs> we don't, we don't, you know, we don't have them as often. We, we never, we never used to. And, you know, it makes me sad. Um, you know what doesn't make me sad though, is a little bit of a break. <laughs> so podcast listeners, uh, you're going to hear a short break. Um, from us and me talking, because hallelujah, no, I'm just kidding. And we'll be right back with same as you remember, same as ever ones. Right after this, stay tuned. That's right, we're back. Thank you for sticking with us here on the Drunk Life Show with Dale Campbell, and we're just going to jump straight in to CJ Boat's favourite bumper. <laughs> it's time for... This is not my show. Or is it? I forget. I can't remember. 1974, 1981, 2002, 2001, 1941, 704. Is it the same as you remember? Or is it the same as it ever was? That's right. Ooh, that's right. Same as you remember. Same as it ever was. It's the part of the show where we take a flashback into the ether, which I have a special show uh, planned, but we'll get to that when we come to it, or when I have time to record it, <laughs> also than anything else. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're going all the way back to 1999 in music. We're not doing news this week, we're doing music, because why not? It's my show. Damn it. All right. (laughs) January 11th, the 26th American Music Awards, Celine Delon and Eric Clapton win. Excuse me. Um, February 23rd, hip hop artist Eminem released the Slim Shady LP. Man. Eminem released his first album 20 years ago. That is a concept. <laughs> that's a concept. <laughs> that's a good one. Just, just, that's a concept. Um, 30, uh, 41st Grammy Awards, My Heart Will Go On, Love Theme from Titanic, Laurel Hin- Hill wins for Sing a Song or another for that. Um, Fortnite single by Maxwell released. Sure. Oh, uh, uh, R&B single of the year. Uh, Amazed was released by Lone Star. I have no idea what that was. Um, Living La Vida Loca, sung by R- Ricky Martin, is released on March 23rd, 1999. Guys, that song is 20 years old. <laughs> And look at Ricky Bundy. Look at him. Look at him go. Um, 13th Soul Train Music Awards on March 25th. May 5th, uh, the 34th, 34th Academy of Country Music Awards. Garth Brooks, Faith Hill, and Tim McGraw win. Um, May 18th, Millennium, third studio album. By Backstreet Boys is released. One of the best-selling albums of all time. Wow. May 19th, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Mess. Phantom Menace, excuse me. uh, Directed by George Lucas is released in cinemas. Guys, that movie is 20 years old. (laughs) This episode will be 20 years old one day. And we'll look back at it and laugh. Um, 44th Eurovision Song Contest, uh, Sweden wins, but take me to your heaven. 
in Jerusalem. Wow. British singer Dido's debut album No Angel was released on June 1st, 1999. Uh, Woodstock 999. Ooh, 999. Music festival begins. Uh, attended by 200,000 and unfortunately ended in violence. Uh, August 12th, Sakira records her first live album entitled MTV Unplugged <laughs> Original. Fly, fifth studio album boom by the Dixie Chicks was released on August 31st. Um, September 9th was the MTV Music Awards. Lauren Hill and Sam Smith. I'm oh, sorry, Will Smith. Sam Smith and Will Smith are not the same people. I know this. Just heads up. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dumbass. Just saying. <laughs> um, Breathe, single by Faith Hill, launches on October 1st. <gasps> believe! Yes! I believe. Single by, released by Cher, uh, Billboard Song of the Year, 1999, and Grammy Award for Best Dance Recording. <laughs> That's a odd category. Released October 19th. Do you believe in a thing called love? Yes. That's the song. Copyright. Right there. It's parody. Right. Right. Uh, don't know who he is. Uh, Dr. Dre released the second studio album on November 16th. Do you, do, uh, How Do You Like Me Now by Toby Keith was released. Uh, the Billboard song of 2000 was released on November 22nd. Uh, rapper Jay-Z Stabs record executive. Ooh, Jesus. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not finishing the end of that sentence. Hey, weddings. Talk show Wade Brandy weds dancer Maddie Tecker. Uh, Dixie Chiss singer Emily Aaron. With singer songwriter Charlie Robinson in the Lone State, Lone Star State in Texas. Uh, Eminem marries Kimberly Ann Scott for the first Scott for the first time. Scott, wow. Uh, Los Angeles Galaxy soccer player David Beckham weds Spice Girl singer Victoria Beckham at the five hundred and sixty acre. Lotterum Castle outside Dublin Island. This was in 1999. Jesus, I need some Jesus. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see. Matchbox Twenty. Uh, lead singer Rob Thomas, rocker Rob Thomas. Um. Wed's model, Mandela in California. Uh, Prince Rogers Nelson divorces belly dancer Manti Gaja after two years of marriage. Um, and just scrolling through the bottom here, see if there's anything, any relatable. Deaths in 1999. I don't think so. Again, it depends on your perspective. But I don't see anything that's popping out to me. I don't... Hmm. Nope. Well, nothing like 2016. Oh, too, too soon. Too soon. Alright, well that, ladies and gentlemen, 
was same as you remember same as the other ones and it had this jaunty tune this is not my show or is it I forget I can't remember 1974, 1981, 2002, 2001, oh, 1941. Is it the same as you remember? Or is it the same as it ever was? Indeed. Same remember. Same as it ever was. I'm gonna get... I need to... I need to get the, the CJ bumper for it. Because that one, this one, I like, but no one else does. <laughs> Everyone's divided about my bumper, <laughs> which it's a weird, it's a, okay, it, we're in a good place in this podcast if the one thing we're arguing about is the bumper. Um, but anyway, so let's talk, let's talk a little bit about Avengers Endgame. And like I said, no spoilers. No spoilers at all. Because we're literally... Bird um, is captivating audiences whoa, and... Whoa, bur- shh, shh, shh. Lady will get to you. CS... Oh, CBSN New York will get to you. Um, but with Sheely talking about the size of... Marvel's opening. That sounds. <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> the sheer, the size of Marvel's opening. We're talking about the size of Marvel's opening. <laughs> um, but yes, it had a. $1.2 billion worldwide opening. Uh, the universe belongs to Marvel. Avengers Endgame shattered the record for biggest opening weekend with an estimated $350 million domestic and $1.2 billion, that's billion with a B, globally, reaching new pinnacle in the blockbuster era The comic book studio has to dominate. The Avengers uh, finale far exceeded uh, even its own uh, expectations. According to the studio estimates on Sunday, the billion, uh, sorry, the billion, wow, the movie has been forecast uh, for 250, uh, 260 to 300 opening in the US and Canadian theaters, but moviegoers turned out in such droves that Endgame uh, blew past its previous record of 257.7 million since last year's Infinity War surpassed The Force Awakens. Wow. We're literally, okay, we talked about both biggest movie franchises today. We talked about Star Wars. Uh, oh, by the way, forgot to mention, um, back to the set, um, about the Star Wars run. So, because of the weather, we didn't really get characters out on the track, but they had a huge, like, undercover meeting area, like, literally right before the finish line. And it was insane. The lines were insane. And... You had them at the end. We got we got um, our two D two photos um, at ESPN where we had to uh, pick up our registration. So, I mean, I we got to meet, we got to see the characters. So that's helpful. <laughs> um, but they did have meet and greets technically, but it was right at the end, and yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's good. Star Wars characters are fun to me, but it's one of those things. Just like I can meet all of those in 
regular time. You know, <laughs> it is what it is. No BB. Oh, was the BB-8 there? I don't think BB-8 was there. I don't think so. Anyway, <laughs> I just because this reminded me of it, I wanted to bring it up real quick. Um. Oh, expert, what are you doing? Ooh, expert. We'll figure it out. Um, Force Awakens. Uh, Endgame uh, was just as enormous overseas, worldwide. It uh, beat the previous record, uh, record set by Infinity War. It didn't open in China, though, um, until two weeks after its debut. So, there's that. Uh, uh, one Fall Swoop. Endgame has uh, was made more movies like Skyfall, Aquaman, The Dark Man Rises, and gr- has grossed in their entire run. Wow, already? Jesus. Um, we'll play this 39 second video. Why not? Lady, get back here. (laughs) That sounds... If you haven't heard, it is captivating audiences and breaking box office records. Avengers Endgame now has its place in movie history. We're the Avengers. We gotta finish this. The Disney Marvel film is now the first film to cross the $1 billion mark in its debut. Avengers Endgame is estimated to have grossed $1.2 billion at the box office worldwide. Captain Marvel comes in second this weekend with $8.1 million. The Curse of La Llorona is third, taking in $7.5 million. Breakthrough fourth with $6.3 million. And rounding out the top five, Shazam with $5.5 million. I'm honestly... This breaking news... Well, sure. This breaking news. What's the breaking news? from news? India, where the most powerful cyclone in years battered the country's northeast oh, no. coast overnight. Cyclone Fani hit the low-lying region with top winds above 125 miles an hour. More than one million people had been evacuated Oof. ahead of this storm. This is a region where storms in the past have killed thousands. Local officials say there is significant damage, and there are reports at least three people have died. The storm is headed toward the major city of Kolkata, and it may reach a refugee camp in Bangladesh where more than a million people live. We'll be following the story all morning as we get new developments. Wow. Okay. Well, I am. Um... Our thoughts are with people in India, apparently. So, there's that. I didn't know that that was the thing. So, there's that. Um, but no, Avengers Endgame, again, there will be a red review on the Geek Eye show of it in full detail, I'm sure. I'm on that episode. Um, it's coming up. But, um, it, what to say is that, yes... It's very impactful. I'll put it that way. And we're going to put a pin in that. And (laughs) not talk about it again. Um, But yeah. So there we go. That's... I think that's the the show. That's the show. One act, two act, three acts, out! Um, What did we learn today? We learned that we can slip and slide around the world. We can sploosh and splash and douche around the world. Um, whenever you're in a line and there's a ton of people around, just start making a farm animal noises. Just, just, just all around. Just do that. Um, we also learned that uh, 5Ks can be an emotional roller coaster. We learned that. Uh, we also learned. Uh, that uh, it's really hard to get out of bed at three in the morning. <laughs> That's also a lesson we learned. Uh, Suri taught us that shrimp are dicks. So there's that. <laughs> we learned that. Uh, we also learned that uh, we also took a trip back to 1999 in music and saw how it was. 
back then, a lot of things that I remember, actually, from that timepiece, which is both good and bad, because I'm like, oof, that was 20 years ago. Okay. I'm getting to that point in my life, I think. Um, We also learned that Avengers Endgame is a big movie. I also learned that I can't do a monkey impression. <laughs> That's one thing we, we also learned. And we also learned that this show wouldn't be possible without you. Um, you can provide feedback to us. Um, show at geek-io.net. Um, put GLS um, bad monkey impressions. In the in the subject line, and it'll get to me. Um, also, uh, you can join the Discord, geek dash slash Discord. Um, join the conversation once we've gone offline. Um, there, uh, patreoncom slash geekio is where you can find everything uh, that we do on the geekio network. And it'll help support us. And you get an exclusive room when you join that. So get on that. Um, you can find me on the internet. Uh, you can find the show slash Geekio everywhere. And on podcasting platforms. You can find me on the internet at the Dale Campbell Twitter and Instagram are my main platforms. For me, and for all of you, we'll see you all next time. Bye. to a Geek.io Media Network LLC production. Would you like to convert that to pounds? Copyright 2019. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs>